respond and talk about some of those earnings reactions, the sharp ones that are coming in today. One such reaction is, of course, Bank of India. As we've been telling you, the stock is down about 5 6%. Uh, so it's a good time to bring in the management and go through some of the details into the third quarter numbers. The asset quality, of course, has been very, very steady. In fact, it's uh, best over the last nine-year period. The gross NPA ratio has come in at about 5.35%. The net NPA ratio uh, looks uh, quite okay at 1.41%. Deposit growth is at a nine-quarter low, tells us uh, Abhishek Kothari, our colleague. So let's uh, talk about what really is the issue. Remember, the margin has slipped below the 3% mark as well, and that is something that the market has really taken note of. The margin at the end of the third quarter stands at 2.85%. We have with us Mr. Rajneesh Karnatak, MD and CEO of Bank of India, to take some questions. Mr. Karnataka, thank you very much for uh, being with us. So I want to start first with the margin issue because, I mean, we're just going by the, the stock reaction today. And I think this is the biggest concern that banks across the board are facing. How much more will margins get compressed? Now, you've seen a significant decline and the numbers come below 3%, even though you haven't had very, very strong or very scorching sort of loan growth. Can you just explain the margin dynamics to us, how you see the cost of funds uh, shaping out and what we should be prepared for in the coming quarter? Yeah, if you see on the margin side, uh, uh, if the RBI data also, if you see on a YOY basis of the first fortnight of January, so the credit growth is around 20% and the deposit growth in the industry is around 13%. So there is a gap of around 7%. So the growth in credit has been uh, more than the deposit in the growth in the deposit. If you see Bank of India per se, on a YOY basis, we have grown our uh, credit loan book by around 57,000 crores and our deposit has grown by 54,000 crores. So there is definitely some liquidity uh, pressure which was there in December and this quarter also it is there and the margins have come down because of that. However, if you see our nine month uh, NIMS, uh, it, uh, it is at uh, on a global level at 2.95% uh, and if you see our domestic NIMS, it is at around 3.3%. Uh, uh, so that is where we have maintained our NIM on the domestic side and on the overall global side. For this quarter also, we will be protecting our NIMS at the level which is there for the December quarter only because uh, we are doing all our efforts to improve our CASA. So our CASA, if you see the growth in the CASA has been at around 11,000 in absolute terms and our CASA percentage is also healthy at 44%. Retail term deposit with 44% and Bank of India having a very strong franchise for the deposits. So only 12% of our total domestic deposit is bulk deposit and 88% of this is uh, from the retail term deposit and the CASA, CA and the SA. So our cost of funds, uh, cost of deposit is also uh, maintained at a lower level and we are containing it. So it is well, well below uh, the 5% range. So Mr. we Mr. do not Karnata, much of sir. pressure beyond this point uh, coming. Okay, so, so you've given us lots of numbers, lots of different parameters. I just want to sort of you know, crystallize it for the benefit of our viewers. Uh, as we look at full year FY24, since you're saying you're taking all of these efforts on the deposit side as well, just give us some targets. Uh, what will be your full, full year loan growth target and what will be your full year deposit mobilization target? This gap that you spoke of at the end of the third quarter, to what extent do you think you can close in on it? And should we take 2.8% as the, the rock bottom for NIMS, uh, your uh, you know, total NIMS, global plus, international plus, domestic put together? So let me clarify again, this 2.85 is only a quarterly NIM. On an annualized basis, our global NIM is at 2.95% and we will be protecting that 2.95% on a March 24 number. As regards our loan growth and the deposit growth, our credit growth guidance remains the same at 11 to 12% and deposit growth guidance for March 24 at 10 to 11%. Apart from that, we are sitting on an excess SLR of around 30,000 crores. That will help us take care of the incremental credit growth which comes which is beyond the <coughs> deposit growth if it happens, though we are taking out all efforts to improve our retail term deposit and CASA numbers in Q4. Uh, this, uh, you know, advances uh, guidance of 11 to 12 percent. Can you break that up in terms of corporate loan and retail loan? And is there a difference in margins between the two segments? Yeah, as far as the corporate book is concerned, so we are saying the credit growth of around 11 to 12 percent will be broken up into 55 percent into RAM advances, which is retail, agriculture and MSME, and remaining 45 into the corporate. So margins are definitely thin in the uh, corporate side, but we are also uh, giving advances on the A-rated and the triple B-rated investment grade numbers where the margins and the net interest 
uh, income is uh, better. As regards the RAM book also, there also underwriting has been very strong and we are also trying to protect our uh, margins through the return on assets and also on the numbers which are there on the earning assets. So the NPA numbers is also coming down. If you see our NPA fresh mm -hmm. slippage is only 1300 cro uh, crores in Q3, which means that our overall return on the earning assets is, will be much better in this quarter. That is how we are trying to protect our NIMS and the margins. Uh, you said the NIMS on your corporate book are thinner. What are the NIMS that you enjoy on an average across the various segments on the corporate side? So exact number on the corporate book, uh, I would not be able to tell at this present moment. So if you see our corporate book, which we have given in our presentation also, 93% of our corporate book is an investment grade book. So oh. typically for any bank, a AAA rated corporate will, give you, will be giving a finer rate where the NIMS will be finer. Uh, a AA rated, we are able to charge more. For an A rated, we are able to charge even higher. So that is how it works in the system. That is how it is yeah. there in the market. Mr. Karnatak, you know, just a final word on asset quality. You're absolutely right. I mean, third quarter, there seems to be no issue. Your uh, slippages have come down. The NPA ratios look really good. I'm just trying to, you know, figure out because the growth in personal loans is, is very robust for you. And obviously, that's the high-yielding portfolio. I think 11% is the is the growth that we've seen on the personal loan side. I'm looking at quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth here. Uh, can you give us some sense on asset quality trends as you see going forward? Is there any reason to worry on the uh, uh, the unsecured side of things. I'm just looking at the SMA 1 and SMA 2 uh, numbers as well, where there's a slight uptake, quarter on quarter, I think 6-7% increase. So leave us with some guidance on asset quality. Yeah, firstly on the SMA side, uh, see it is around 8,900 crore, 5 crore and above SMA book and it has increased from 5,700 crores in September quarter to 8,900 crores. But let me clarify, within that 8,900 crores, we have 4,500 crores in four accounts of uh, Telangana state government uh, PSUs, wherein the accounts had slipped to SMA zero category as on 31st December. Out of that, two, three accounts are already out of that and another account will be coming out of the SMA category by in another fortnight. So they will also become standard regular. So if you remove that 4,500 crore, the SMA uh, book overall has come down to at, uh, actually 4,300 crore of SMA as against 5,700 crore, which is uh, below 1% of our total global loan book. As regards uh, the overall asset quality is concerned, so 1,300 crore was the slippage, which was one of the lowest slippages uh, in the quarter for the bank, 1,300 crore of uh, fresh slippages, against which the total reduction in NPA was around 2,700 crores, with the reduction in SMA numbers and the overall improvement in the underwriting and also the collection efficiency which is there and the monitoring of the advances. We are pretty sure that we will be able to control the asset quality. As regards the personal loan book, it is at around 8,700 crore, which includes the credit card numbers, and it is less than 1% of our global loan book. Uh, so that is one point. The other point being that though personal loan is unsecured, it is secured in a way there are, there are cash flows in it. So most of our borrowers in the personal loan side are salaried borrowers who are having saving accounts with Bank of India. So that way we have clear visibility on their salaries and cash flows. So we do not see any delinquency much in that. The delinquency there is only 0.4%, around 0.4% only. There also we have put lot of guard rates like civil score and right. the salary account being there and other underwriting things. So we do not see much of a stress over there also. Uh, Mr. Karnataka, we leave the conversation here for now. Thank you very much for joining in. Bank of India's stock is down 6%, but the management is confident about protecting NIMS at 2.95% on an annualized basis and seeing uh, a loan growth of 11 to 12%, uh, while the asset quality will remain in control. It's time now to shine a spotlight on the backbone of the 